Well, good morning, everybody. It is Friday morning, and it's April 16th, so we are past the halfway mark of April, and well on our way to spring. April showers bring May flowers, as they say. So, um, And today we're going to finish the 10th chapter of the book of Acts. We're just going to bite off a few verses today. We're going to look at verses 44 to 48, but there's a lot going on, and I think a fair amount to talk about in this, so we'll see how long this one gets. We'll try not to get too drug out, um, but there's a lot going on in this tail end of the of the tenth chapter of Acts, um, and then we'll get into chapter eleven on Monday. Tomorrow, of course, or no, tomorrow. Excuse me, Saturday. I'm getting a day ahead. It's not for Saturday. It's Friday. So we'll start eleven tomorrow, um, and then of course Saturday or Sunday we have worship at ten. Um, so let's just jump right into this bit of scripture so we can get through this. Um, the Gentiles receive the Holy Spirit is the uh, head heading for this bit of scripture. Acts 10, 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers, <coughs> excuse me, the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Okay. I said there's a lot going on here. <clears throat> Excuse me. First of all, we know that Peter has left off with Peter saying to them, all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name, Jesus' name. Um, that's all the prophets. You remember back in the Old Testament even, you know, that the salvation will come to, the, to all the world through the children of Abraham, through through Abraham's seed. And of course, we believe this to be Jesus. So, um, here we have Peter speaking and we right out of the gate we have the Gentile Pentecost, if you will. The Holy Spirit is coming on these people, just as it came on the day of Pentecost. Uh, remember with all of the speaking in tongues and all of the people understanding, which are, we talked about back there, um, that I believe the mir true miracle is in the understanding. And here again, we have that miracle of the understanding of the of the Gentiles understanding this message that Peter is bringing to them. And such so much so that the Spirit has come upon them and blessed them with, with complete understanding we would, would perceive. Um, so it's that that is a big deal that that coming of the Holy Spirit. Um, remember, they haven't been gone through years of Bible teaching or anything like that. They the Spirit comes to them in that moment of of clarity when Peter is preaching. Um, next, we have in verse forty five the circumcised believers. Um, those are the Jews that came with Peter to uh, to to visit Cornelius and his family uh, and friends, <clears throat> and of course. We get uncomfortable when we see that word circumcised, the circumcised believers, and that's to designate that, that it is the Jewish believers. Um, the circumcision is one of those things that, we'll, that we'll, we'll be talking about it again and again as we go through, and it's an important thing. And I don't know that we really, as Westerners in our modern society, really understand the impact and the depth and the, and the baggage, if you will, that's attached to this idea of circumcision. Um, this is part of the Abrahamic covenant. This is part of what was commanded to Abraham, that all the males be circumcised. And on the eighth day, Jewish males were circumcised. Now, we do need to remember that historically, through different time periods, um, and one of which was during the wandering in the wilderness with, with Moses, there, there, was, there was some slacking of, of how much they about uh, Bided by that, and there were times, not there in that time, but other times where they it really became kind of abandoned. Uh, but remember that before Joshua could lead the Israelites into the promised land, all the males that weren't circumcised had to be circumcised. That was obedience. It's all about it. We've this whole thing that we've been dealing with with Cornelius is about obedience, and uh, and and the, the, that's part of this. The, the the thing with circumcision is about obedience. It's also differentiated. It's also being being divided, which is the thing that we are getting rid of now, ironically. But that's a big big part of what is being set apart. Um, and now, interestingly enough, we often accuse uh, ancient. Um, Judaism uh, of being a very highly patriarchal um, religion, a patriarchal society. Now, all societies in those days were patriarchal, but we really condemn 
Judaism in particular, we don't typically condemn. I don't see that kind of condemnation coming down on Islam by any means, and we won't dive into that any further than that. But the interesting thing to remember is that they're in 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 Jewish faith, in 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 Israeli faith, uh, Hebrew faith was the word I want. In the Hebrew faith, there is nothing about female circumcision, because the Talmud tells us that the female is born complete. She's born holy. She's born sacred. Um, the male is born incomplete and is made complete through the act of circumcision. So the, the whole thing is, is that the woman is complete at birth. She's perfect. Men are perfected through this eight-day thing where, where they are circumcised. That's an interesting thing, a thing we need to bear in mind when we are considering the whole thing about the patriarchal of, of the Hebrew faith. <clears throat> so with that, let's move on. Um, Peter, well, one other thing I'll point out, it was such, something that was so vital to their faith um, that there was some time periods where, where some of the rulers, the Gentile rulers, um, put down a, 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 you know, a prohibition on, on, on circumcision. And if a Jewish boy was discovered to have been circumcised, not only was he killed, but the mother, the mother was killed too. Because remember that Judaism passes down through the, the, the maternal line. It's, you, you know, if your father was, was, was Jewish and your mother was Gentile, you're not Jewish. If your mother was Jewish and your father was Gentile, you were Jewish, okay? Um, in fact, I know of a, a Messianic Jewish um, rabbi who is, a, the father was a Scandinavian, uh, and he's a big, tall, looks like a big, tall Swedish guy, or, a, you know, Norwegian or whatever, the tall, the tall Scandinavians, uh, but yet his mother was Jewish, and so he's Jewish. Anyway, let's go back to the scripture. Um, <clears throat> the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had poured and poured out even on the Gentiles. Again, this is the the, the Gentile Pentecost, if we will, um, and that these they're, they're they're shocked by this because of this idea that they are circumcised, they're they're set apart, they are sacred. But yet these guys that are not sacred, not set apart, these uncircumcised. Um, uh, these heathens, if you will, um, uh, these savages almost, um, not almost, that's what they looked at them as, um, they, the Holy Spirit's been poured out on them just like it was on us. And it's like, wow, that would have been a world shocking thing. That would have been, uh, that would have shocked their whole, their whole understanding. And I don't think we can appreciate that. Um, and then you had the speaking in tongues, and they're extolling God. Now, we don't know what they're speaking in tongues and, and extolling God, but, but apparently, uh, perhaps all of a sudden they're speaking in, in, in Hebrew. I don't know. Now, that would be really interesting, especially if you're a Hebrew speaker, you're watching these Gentiles that you most likely had no clue about how to speak Hebrew, and now all of a sudden they're speaking Hebrew. That would have been mind-bending. Mind, mind um, and the next thing that Peter does that's really something that we look that we I think probably confuses us a little bit if we really think about it. We kind of, a lot of things in Scripture, we just kind of blow right by them and don't really think about the ramifications of that compared to where we're at today. And this is one of those things that, that, that I think we have here. Um, can, Peter says, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? They're uncircumcised. They are not complete. They're not sacred, not holy. Um, and guess what? They haven't gone through any kind of, as disciples and Baptists here at Woodlawn, you know, we like to have a, a classes and, and pre pre preparations for, for baptism. You know, we don't just all of a sudden baptize somebody. We have at least a couple of classes with them and talking about so that they understand what's going on. Um, and now the Laura Coolers, we just rebaptized on Easter, but Laura was baptized Southern Baptist. And so there really wasn't a need to go through. I didn't do any classes with her because Laura had classes back then. Plus she's been coming to our Bible studies. Um, and so I didn't do classes with her, but here, these people have no background. In, in in the faith, nothing. They're Gentiles. This is the they've just got it today. Um, this is this is still the same day that Peter arrived. This is not like a week later that they've been talking or something like that. Boom, baptizing. Um, and so that is kind of interesting. And we I don't think that we we really pause and realize what's going on here. They're baptizing the name of Jesus Christ because they've received the Holy Spirit. There's no need 
to to belabor the fact we'll catch up with the rest of it later they receive jesus and their heart and their faith um, and they have faith in him as their savior and so that is a interesting thing there uh to me anyway as pastor i've been dealing with baptism um and then we finally we go back to that same thing that we've been talking about before um then they invited him to stay for several days as well i'm sure as the jewish people that are with him sometimes i've heard some people say that there were six people with him i don't see anywhere in this scripture that tells me six but maybe i just missed that uh somehow i think that's more of a tradition uh, i'm not sure why they came up with that number but the people that were traveling with with peter most likely almost assuredly also stayed with cornelius and his family uh and his friends um they are invited to stay for several days that of course it would be against jewish law that they're staying with gentiles people that are uncircumcised for crying out loud um they're, they're not people of the faith and also bear in mind um again about the uncircumcised remember that christianity at that time was not a separate religion it was working as a sect within judaism and here peter has just baptized and uh, of course jewish people didn't really do a lot of baptisms um uh, uh, that wasn't really a jewish thing that was coming up that kind of came up out with with john um but <clears throat> they they did clean ritual baths but not the baptism um but here he's brought them in and, and and recognized them as part of that sect which would in fact in any effect make them part of judaism and they're not circumcised uh-oh they're gentiles they haven't gone through the conversion process they haven't taken the classes um so that's really a big thing too uh and we're going to that that continues to get addressed and that continues to be what i i've always said is what really gets the the ire of of the you know, jewish people up against paul besides the fact that he they skipped ships and you know went over to the other side as they say um so um that's where we're going to leave you off today we'll jump into chapter 11 tomorrow and um, guess what peter kind of get gets to answer for some of this um to the other jewish people so the folks back in jerusalem so we'll deal with that tomorrow uh have a blessed day it's a little dreary out there at the moment but uh hey enjoy the beginning of the weekend so we'll see you in the morning have a blessed day be a blessing to someone today